Hey, what's up, everybody? Wow, Jesus Christ. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today is one such day again, as, uh, yeah, I had a deck ready for last season, didn't get around to making a deck guide video about it, and then they gave the bounty archetype in Syndicate another few buffs which uh, was really really handy because that means I can give you an updated look at the deck that I was wanting to showcase. So today we're heading into Syndicate, we're heading into Bounty with a little bit of poison so uh, I've aptly named this deck Toxic Bounty. So if you've watched a few videos on my channel before, you know that I'm a really big fan of the Syndicate faction. I like the fact that you need to calculate a little bit to see what you're doing, to not waste any of your coins, because uh, coins need to be spent uh, thoughtfully, and we don't want to let them go to waste. And Bounty actually is another level on top of that. Every time you kill something with Bounty, you get coins based on the, the base power of the unit that you killed. Uh, so you need to make sure that you have enough space for those coins to get into your bag. Uh, which means that we need to, yeah, just to keep an eye on how we spend those coins before we actually murder something that is bountied. So, as always, we're going to be going through the cards one by one in detail. If you're not interested in that, you can find the deck directly in the description through the link to the Play Grant website. You can click on it. Go to the website, import it into your own game. If you do so, don't forget to upvote it on the Playground website as well, because all advice and feedback is really, really appreciated. Um, also, if you're not interested in my descriptions, you can also skip right ahead to the example matches using the timeline down below. If you are interested, then welcome. We're going to be heading through each and every single one of those cards. And we're starting with a kind of new card, not entirely. It's been in the, the game for quite some time, uh, but I've only, well, we only recently started to go into Bounty again. Bounty got more interesting, and I think Scapegoat actually fills a really cool niche role that we didn't have in the Bounty deck before. So, Scapegoat, two power for four provisions, but is disloyal, so you play this on your opponent's side of the board. You gain seven coins in return, giving you a five coin five point difference kind of and on deploy you also place bounty on the card itself meaning that if you kill it you gain two coins back not exactly a one-to-one -one, since of course you need to kill it uh, so it still remains at that five coins but why uh, do i feel like this card fulfills a niche role it allows you to play proactively before if you had a bounty deck and you had to go first you had blue coin um, there wasn't really something you could do uh, to prep the board. So uh, with Bounty, you either want to put a Bounty on a unit or put an attacker on the board, a damage dealer on the board that you could use to kill those units that were bountied. Uh, if you start out, there's neither of the two you can really do because if you put a damage dealer on the board, uh, your opponent could counter it or just kill it outright without you being able to do something else. With Scapegoat, you counter that. Uh, you both give yourself enough coins to kill it and you get a target on the board that already has a bounty. Something that will become more important if we go into the leader ability that we use as well. Then we have one Eternal Fire Disciple. It's in the deck just to have another spender. So three power for four provisions gives you two coins. And on every coin that you spend, you spawn a two power Fire Sworn Salad. So very efficient spender, but you can only do this once per turn. But still, very, very good spender to get rid of some excess coins. Then we have failed experiment. As I said before, this also contains a bit of poison. So we have four poison options. Failed experiment is one of them. Failed experiment is very handy. You get a six point unit on the board for four provisions. He poisons himself uh, on deploy. And if you spend four coins, you can move the poison from himself to another unit, including one of your own. Of course, you don't want to be doing that. You want to poison something of your opponent. Uh, you can repeat this every three turns. We will probably not be doing that at all. We're just going to be moving that poison once and that's going to be it. Then we have uh, one of our bounty crime cards. There's double hysteria in this uh, deck. Uh, it has been bu bumped down to four provisions. So you place a bounty on an enemy unit and damage it by three. If it already had a bounty, you damage it by six instead. So either gives you a bounty or gives you quite a good chunk of damage. If you don't, uh, if you have a bounty on a bigger unit, that can sometimes be handy. But otherwise, we're going to be using this to put bounty on a unit. Then fist deck is our other poison options. So together with the failed experiments, we have four poison options because we have two of each. Four profits, so you gain four coins and you poison a unit. If you play the failed experiment first um without using the order ability and you you know that your opponent can't poison it as well because otherwise the unit just dies the field experiment will die uh you could also wait one turn 
use fist tech in the same turn and i'm double poisoned because you can use the four coins that you got from fist tech to use the failed experiments uh, order ability and just kill something outright which is uh very very handy if you come across some uh, big units then of course there's a, a very important part of our bounty archetype as i said before you either want to be applying bounties or killing units with bounties the witch hunter executioners are of course the killers um there are four cards in this deck that can kill by using coins directly so you're you're damage dealing by spending coins those four you need to guard with your life you need to keep into account that your opponent knows that those are your four only options so the witch hunter executioner four power for five provisions two profits so it gives you two coins and for every coin that you spend on it without a cooldown you give an enemy unit either bleeding for one turn or if it has a bound you can damage it by one instead so you can damage units with bounty directly and kill them like that you get coins back and you can use some excess coins to give bleeding some to some other units these guys are very powerful and the crux of this deck basically next up there's one other spender that i've added um bloody good friends six power for five provisions has insanity so they can use their fee ability by uh, damaging themselves instead of spending coins uh, on the fee ability you can give an enemy unit bleeding or if it is boosted damage it by one instead so very similar to the executioners uh, aside from the fact that they will always bleed if the uh, unit that you target is not boosted. Next up, uh, another crime card. I've only added one of these in the deck because they're kind of situational. Uh, you don't want, don't want to have too many of these in the deck. Uh, purge, damage an enemy unit by three. You can increase the damage by one for every witch hunter on your side of the battlefield. So four, five, six, depending on how many you have. And if you kill something with that damage, you put a bounty on the highest power enemy unit that is left after the kill. Um, could be interesting uh, depending on what you do you can use this to kill an, uh, an engine card or something that is already bounty there's no limit to that as well and then when it's killed you gain another bounty immediately so it perpetuates that cycle in a single card so you kill and add a bounty to a unit next up a very interesting card that had a little bit of a change uh, octavia hail six power for six provisions on the ploy you draw up the two of octavia's sons to your hands and then shuffle back the same number of cards um, i'll explain that in a minute she also gained a fee ability for two coins where you can boost an allied witch hunter by two or by three if you destroyed an enemy unit this turn does not need to be a unit with bounty um, what do, does the game mean by Octavia's sons? Uh, Octavia has two sons. So the bounty archetype was when these cards were released, built around the Hale family. Um, you can see all of them on this card, by the way. So Mama Octavia. Then we have, what's his name again? Fabian. Fabian over here. And Ignatius in the back. So a bit of a, 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 a scampy dude and a very buff man. Um... Together they form like a vigilante trio that goes after witches. Um, but it's also a scam, so they just mark ordinary people as witches. You can check all that out in the flavor uh, of the, this family as well, the flavor text for them. Uh, but they go after normal people, they say to an entire village, hey, that's a witch, and then they get paid for killing uh, that normal woman. Uh, so that's a bit of a, the dirty background there. Um, because of the fact that they're vigilantes, they also have a moniker. So they have like a vigilante name. Um, Octavia herself is a witchfinder. We'll be talking about her in a minute. Fabian Hale is the scoundrel. So both of them have a card. And then Ignatius Hale is the brute. Um, which means that the game, uh, this card tells you, you can draw up to two of Octavia's sons. That means that we can either get the brute, the scoundrel, Ignatius Hale or Fabian Hale. Uh, three out of four of these cards are in this deck. Fabian Hale isn't, um, but the other three will be. Um, so we'll talk about them in a minute. But this card allows you to just guarantee those, especially those, uh, those three cards that we have, guarantee them in your hand, which is very powerful, especially against something like Assimilate, uh, as we might be able to show off later on. So long story short, Octavia is a very good consistency card that also now has, gives you a fee option to spend some coins if you need to. Next up we have Kurt, simple witch hunter man, uh, 6 power for 6 provisions and give you the options to either uh, place a bounty on an enemy unit or purify any unit of your choosing. So our purify option and even has a backup, if you don't need to purify anything you can just bounty another unit. Then, you know me, if I have a Syndicate deck, I'm going to use uh, Conjurer's Candle in there. Uh, this card has been nerfed a few times already, but it's still very good. So it gives you four coins, 
uh, on deploy basically uh, this card sticks on the board for an extra round and for each time you use the fee ability you boost the unit by the fee amount plus one uh, so the first time uh, and every time you use the order ability so the fee ability you increase the fee cost meaning that the first time you spend one coin to boost by two the next time you spend two to boost by three and so on and so forth three four four five five six and so on and so forth so it's a really cool uh, spender card uh, where you can always you're almost always guaranteed to be able to spend most of your coins then we have our third damage healing option remember i said we had four so this is the third one horson's freak show four power and one armor another card that was severely nerfed a few uh, months ago uh, gives you two coins so only technically six points and a piece of armor uh, for the um, the eight provisions, which is very very steep, but it's also one of the very few cards that can deal damage directly based on the amount of coins that you spend on it. It needs to be on the melee row, uh, so these guys need to be on the melee row. Uh, but for every two coins that you spend, you damage an enemy unit by two. So this card has been a staple for Syndicate for a very long time. It's been nerfed to eight provisions, um, and even then, it's still a very good card. Next up, we have Graydon, our uh, final big. Um, how should I put this? Um, high value destroyer. Tall removal card. That's the word that I was going for. Uh, three power for nine provisions. And on deploy, if you put them on the melee row, row, you destroy the enemy unit with bounty. This has been changed in the latest patch. Uh, normally, you needed to target a unit with bounty. Now, that has changed to destroy the enemy unit with bounty. So, that means that you don't need to target. So, you can target anything. Even immune units if you manage to immune uh, to bounty an immune unit you can still kill it with grade um, it's going to be the only option but it's still going to be possible otherwise um yeah you you wouldn't have been able to uh, change that bounty to something else um, on top of that, if you pay 5 coins to his tribute, you boost Graydon by the base power of the unit that you destroyed, which can be very, very good, especially against Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard has the um, tendency, Nilfgaard's decks at least, have the tendency to take some of your high power cards and copy them from your for your own. Which means that if they take something like Ignatius Hale or the Scoundrel, which we'll be talking about in a minute, those are 12 and 18 base power. Um, Graydon can definitely just kill that card and gain the same amount of points on himself in one fell swoop. So basically turning that advantage right around. So Graydon very powerful, especially since uh, even a defender can't stop him anymore. Next up, Ignatius Hale. Ignatius Hale got a very big rework last month. Um, changed from his already beefy 12 points in base power to... 18 uh, his uh, provision uh, has also uh, increased quite a bit so to nine and at the beginning of the game or when spawned so just to counter him being abused in some spawning decks you set his own power to one so he's basically damaged by 17 points while in hand deck or in the battlefield whenever an enemy unit with bounty is destroyed you heal yourself by its base power so this card is a very powerful finishing move so you get 18 points for your final card because uh, usually you will have killed enough units with bounty to uh, heal up so that's where the scapegoats also come in a little bit of extra healing for ignatius but even without that you can put him on the board early in the latest in the last round and just use him as a card that gains points over time because every time he gets damaged you can heal that off again by killing something with a bounty he will do that even on the uh, on the battlefield so wherever he is he will be healed if he's still damaged by the amount of uh yeah enemy unit power that you destroy with a bounty then we have some more consistency options first up is vivaldi bank three profits so you gain three coins and then you look at all the cards on top of your deck up until the amount of coins that you have plus one so you see the top card and then for example if you have eight coins you see the next eight cards as well you can play the top card for free. If you choose any of the other cards, you spend the amount of coins that you needed to see that card. So if you pick the third card, you will need to spend two coins to play the card. So it's a tutor card, but with a bit of a limitation uh, and also a bit of luck necessary to actually get the card that you want. Something that is not needed with the other card, the Royal Decree just allows you to play a unit from your deck. Uh, very handy to get that final gold that you might be missing because Syndicate is always a bit of a stickler for a, um, well, for consistency with the deck, which definitely helps out here. Then we have the uh, big bounty card. So the Scoundrel is our final damage dealer, a whopping 12 base power for 10 provisions. And on the ploy, you summon the top bronze unit from your opponent's deck to the opposite row and then place a bounty on it. Um, that means that you give your opponent a card. 
on the battlefield. So you basically tend their own deck, but you can pick a bronze that they really, really need. So against Nilfgaard, for example, a Thirsty Dame is a very good target. You can also spend two coins on this guy uh, to choose whatever bronze you want to summon. So it's not random and then place the bounty on it as well. And his fee ability is unique, where you uh, spend a coin to damage the enemy unit with bounty, bypassing everything. Um, if there's a defender on the board the guarding that unit, um, the scoundrel doesn't care, he just pings it off anyway. Uh, immune units likewise, so it's a bit like Raiden in that regard. He damages the enemy unit with bounty regardless of its location. Next up we have the Professor, also a staple of Syndicate, uh, has been nerfed quite a few times but is still a very good card and fits with bounty very well. 6 power for 12 provisions, on deploy you put a bounty on an enemy unit and damage it by 4. Of course if you kill it you gain the coins immediately as well, uh, meaning that this card could potentially give you um, 6 points of on the board, 4 damage and 4 coins. You can also pay 3 coins for the tribute, uh, I usually don't do that, but you could be facing something with a high armor count, because uh, if you do that you ignore the target's armor as well. Um, so it could be useful there, otherwise never use the tribute please, it's not worth it. And then we have um, Octavia Hale herself in her vigilante form, we haven't seen her yet. So 7 power for 12 prov provisions, the Witch Finder. On deploy you spawn 3 Syndicate Crowns. Syndicate Crowns are tokens on the board, so basically artifacts where you can tap them and gain a coin. Basically increasing your coin pouch by 3. Um, so you can get 9 coins, increase that by 3 by having these on the board, so you have a bit of uh, leeway in how many coins that you need. And she's also an engine card where at the end of your turn, if no enemy unit has a bounty, you automatically place a bounty on the highest power enemy unit. It always is the highest power enemy unit. So if it's a deck that you're facing that has a lot of high powered units, you'll need to be prepared uh, in that you need to be able to kill those units every single turn. That's the ideal situation. Witchfinder puts a bounty on a unit. Next turn, you kill that unit. So at the end of your turn, Witchfinder finds another witch for you to murder. Um... That's where those three coins come into. If it's a very high powered unit, you can spend those extra coins to get up to 12 if you had a full coin pouch and our leader ability will be assisting there as well. And then last but not least, the Brute, six power for 13 provisions. So Ignatius Hale is a, um, well, vigilante name kind of. Starts off with zero profit and a zero point boost on deploy. But the boost is equal to the base power of the highest power enemy unit with a bounty you destroyed this game. That oh, This also changed. Uh, previously it was the base power of the last unit you destroyed with bounty uh, now it is just the highest that you destroyed this this game which also factors into the fact that if your opponents copy scoundrel or ignatius hail you can definitely kill that with a bounty because it just will increase the power of the brute so if you kill the scoundrel for example the brute will also be 18 points which i think is very very cool because that matches with his uh other uh power if in his uh, ignatius hail form um, and whenever you place a bounty on an enemy unit, you also increase the profit by one. So for example, if you killed, um, if you placed, because you don't need to kill, that's also a difference from before. Um, whenever you place a bounty uh, is the, the difference here instead of killing it. So if you've placed six bounties over the course of the game, his profit will be six and that can increase. So in an ideal situation, this card will be six power, boosting itself by nine, for example, and giving you six profit. So this card is always very powerful. Just be prepared to still have a spender to spend those coins that he gives you, because uh, that's the main reason why I added a lot of extra small uh, fee spenders, uh, because otherwise the coins that you get from the Brute more often than not result in not, you not being able to spend those coins as well. Then of course our stratagem in Syndicate is always going to be Tiger's Eye, so five coins in the bank. And then on top of that our leader ability is the new blood money, because uh, this also gained a rework last month. Uh, where on order you damage an enemy unit by six and then gain coins equal to any excess damage dealt, so keep that in mind in your calculations. But whenever an enemy unit with bounty is destroyed you increase the damage by one. So every bounty kill, including the scapegoats, which are very easy to kill, uh, will increase the damage by one. If you use the order you can refresh it and set its damage to one instead. So every time you kill something you get the well every time you uh, use this ability you get the order back as well um, which is very very cool in its own right and that's it for the uh, card explanation so let's not waste any more time and head straight into those example matches okay after two forfeits in a row i probably didn't show the first one i'm hoping i can actually show off something now and this should be ideal harmony 
Okay, so that means there's a lot of engine guards that I can destroy. Uh, we get a scapegoat to start, so that's really good to show off what I want to show off. Um, I don't need Ignatius Hail at the beginning, we have another scapegoat. Double poison is here as well, so we don't need that. We get a damage shooter, which is always important. Um, I would like a second one, because usually the first one can get destroyed. I don't need an extra spender just yet, so I'll get rid of... Okay. That's a quite good start. Um, so let's start with Scapegoat. As I said, Scapegoat gives us a full coin pouch, as it was in the previous match, but we got a forfeit there, so that was a bit awkward. So that's what I'm talking about. So I don't need to really think about what my first move is going to be. I just preemptively put a card there, and it's giving me a lot of coins. And now it even gave me uh, an extra bit of uh, ways of uh, spending my coins there, so I'm just going to tap the Scapegoat and kill it. So that gives us 8 coins now. I can put a bit of bleeding on the Dryad Matron as well, because I don't really need all those coins. And we can move from there. The possibility is now that the Executioner is going to get destroyed. Uh, or not. Okay, that's good. So if that happens, what you want to do is keep focusing on putting bounties on the board. Um, we could do that with the Scoundrel. But that's not really too useful. Professor is also cool, but... If there's already a damage leader on the board, you don't want to waste Professor, because uh, he's also going to kill the bounty card immediately. Um, so what we're going to do here is put Hysteria on the biggest one, because we're going to be better off with killing that one, because we don't waste any coins. If we would have put Hysteria on the Dryad Matron, we only need one coin to kill it, and uh, we would be at six and we would gain four, so that's not going to be good. So let's kill the biggest one. And we get a full coin pouch, and then we can put some more bleeding on this one, because um, it just it just deserves it, I suppose. And then we get Anterion. Anterion is also a harmony card. So I'm going to put a bounty on that. I can still do that. Yes, so let's use Kurt to put a bounty on Anterion. And then use six coins to kill it, and we're going to get five coins back. Meaning that we're at seven. And spend another one to uh, bleed the Dryad Matron. I might actually use all of them here. Yeah, let's use all of them. I mean, just bleed it fully. The reason why I'm doing that is that I want to have a little bit more space for my other coins. And that didn't move. Interesting. And I could technically use Professor now if I wanted to. There's not really a need, though. Uh, I'm gonna use the Scandal now to get something else out of the deck. So let's use the Scandal uh, and use the Tribute. That's what I usually do, because you can actually just pick whatever you want. Um, they used almost all their movement card now, cards now, so I'm gonna get rid of the Cat Witcher, so they have none of them left. Um, and I can use the Tiger's Eye to get a full coin pouch. And if you've been counting with me, that should end up okay. Because we're at seven coins again. And we can put at least one point of bleeding on the Cat Witcher there. So Doblatana Sentry is next. I'm going to kill it with uh, Professor. Because I don't want to see that bumping back and forth. It might be a little bit of overkill. Uh, but I think it's fine. I could also go with Failed Experiment. But there's nothing really big to kill. Uh, so I'm just going to put Bounty on it, and it also works out perfectly with our coins. Because we can hit it there, it's not going to die, but we can use the Scoundrel. And we're going to end up at 5, we're going to get 4 back, so it's another full coin pouch. And if you've been counting even further, you can also see that Ignatius is now at full health already. Because of the amount of killing that we've done. Um, and I think I should be fine here. We're gonna get... I could kill the Cat Witcher here, but I don't really need to, I think. Um, I can put double bleeding on the Cat Witcher, one on here and then one on there, and just use the Conjurer's Candle and start uh, buffing some cards to get a, a nice head start here. Um... Might even spend three. Yeah. So that's going to kill the Dryad Matron. So they're not going get to be getting any points from it next. Except from when they... Yeah, there we go. 
There we go. And that allows us to actually push now. Um, because we do have a very big damage dealing here. It's 11 power at the moment. So even just from the get-go, we can kill the first thing that comes up. Um, and if we can get some nice gold cards going, that would even be more ideal. The Witchfinder is really good. We get another damage dealer, so that's basically perfect. Um, so I'm going to get rid of the poison. We don't really need it. We get great and even, so it's definitely not necessary, even though we got another one. Um, there are situations where this isn't even a problem. Because of Octavia Hale, if you have her, you can just swap out the poison card that you have in hand for something else, and then it's going to be okay. Um, I'm actually going to even play the failed experiment first here, because we don't really have a target for anything else. So let's put it down first. There might actually be Dryad Rangers in that deck. I've seen that before, so they might, they're might they going to be killing this in one go. There we go. Okay. Should have told about that before, but it's not a problem. Um, I'm going to put the Witchfinder down, so she's going to be putting uh, bounties on everything that's on the board right now. So we should be able to kill everything from now on. Mysteries of Lockfane is a good bleed. And that's a very good target to actually kill with Graydon in a minute. Uh, so Witch Hunter Executioner gives us one coin short, but we can get another Syndicate coin here and then kill the Dryad Ranger. There we go. And I could even kill... I'll see what happens next. This thing doesn't have Harmony, uh, so it would even be in my advantage. And we can uh, get another coin from that if we let it die like this. Okay. So there we have Anterion. Um, we have two Witch Hunters on the board already. I'm going to kill the Lake Guardian with Blood Money. And there we go. Boosh. We get seven coins for that now. Uh, we do still need to play a card. Hmm. Might have not thought this through completely. Although... Because yeah, I need to play a card... Uh, it's not ideal, but I'll put some bleeding over here. What's the profit at the moment? Profit is seven even. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. I can boost with the Conjurer Scandal and then use the uh, the Brute. There we go. So we get five more, uh, seven more coins for later on because we're going to be needing that to kill the Anteon. Didn't even need to put that much bleeding on it, to be honest. Um, it actually is going to work out pretty well. I'm just counting here. So we have... It's going to be at 9. It's going to be at... Jesus Christ. Okay. There's a lot of cards on the board already. already. Okay. So I'm going to want to count here. I have... 9 points there I can pick it down by one and I can do six damage with purge at the moment um, I can kill the Antarion without anything else yeah it's fine I think I can do this and this take down the Antarion okay that's five coins extra I can now kill Oh boy, I'm not going to make it. Because I do 6 damage with Birch, which would just give us... Okay, I kind of miscalculated this, but... We can kill the Cat Witcher and then put another bounty there. Uh, but I won't be able to kill it, so that's fine. That's fine. What's the base power of this thing? 7. Um, it is more efficient for me to kill Dana with the Tribute. So I'm going to do that exactly. We're going to be paying the tribute here, which is why we kept the five coins. And that gives us quite a good advantage. Uh, they still have two cards they need to play. Hmm. I'm going to keep the leader ability. And just put some more bleeding out. And then boost something by six. Do I spend those final three damage? It's 46, so that means I need to play 22 points in the final 
I'm gonna do it. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get Ignatius Hale later on. So that's 18 points to end it with. So now they need to play 22 cards, uh, 22 points. And they don't want to be playing Chameleon because it's uh, it's actually lowering, and it's only triggering two harmonies, three harmonies. Okay, so that's 14 more points. 10 more points. They do trigger another harmony with that, but they lose three points as well. So I don't think that gained them any points. And then that. Okay, that's fine. That was actually quite a lot of points. 17 points on that final one. The uh, Lake Guardian Dusk aspect. We still got some cards going. Um, scapegoat is not one of them. But there's Ignatius. Ignatius, Ignatius. Gonna get rid of the failed experiments and the scapegoat. Although the scapegoat would give me a full point pouch. And I risk grabbing another poison card. And it's actually really big, the risk. So I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna finish redrawing here. Okay. I'm gonna put the scapegoat down. I don't know why I got boosted. Yeah, okay, because it, it triggers the... Uh, it's fine. It triggers that. Um, so now Horse and Shriek Show. It's gonna give us a double full coin pouch and I can kill one of the the rangers or the, the dryads here at least. And I think I can just kill it with this. Not that it really matters because I don't have enough uh, to kill the ranger either way. Um, I'm gonna do it because I need this to waste those coins anyway. So that's fine and then the 18 points of... it's gonna be close. Depends on their final card actually. Ooh, and it does trigger that again. It is just enough. Just enough. That was really close. Holy shit. So yeah, Ignatius Hale is really, really powerful. Next up is Vampires. That should also be to my advantage, I think. There, there are some purifying cards in Vampires, but you, not a lot. <laughs> so this should be fine. Uh, I don't need that many scapegoats. Okay. That's a good start. This is really a cursed recording session. I had two forfeits, then a good match, the one that you just saw, and then I had this going on. So this might be our third forfeit. It's gonna be another forfeit. It's taking too long. God damn it, I was hoping to just squash that vampire's deck. There we go. And another forfeit. Third forfeit of the recording session. It's good for my rank though. And last but not least, we have... Oh boy, that's probably the worst matchup. That's a lot of Veil. Veil is not something we like. Veil is definitely not something we like, because uh, we can poison and we can bounty. We do get the Purify in one go. Could put Ignatius Hail down, but it's not really useful, I think. Um, Eternal Fire Disciple is going to be good against Gal Tullus, which I'm assuming is in that deck, and then we do yeah, that, that's fine. All right, I think the Witch Finder is going to have to be pretty early. Because with Witch's Sabbath, we're going to be able to replay her, if this is what I think it is. Should be able to f win against this, if it is what I think it is. I thought it was going to be Galtellus, but let's start with the Scapegoat regardless. And I have no idea what to expect here. So Scratch a lot. That's actually good, I can kill that quite easily. Um, so I'm good, just gonna kill the scapegoat here. And then bleed the Fuka. Um, uh, yeah, that's fine. One is fine. So Scratch Lord is annoying, so they can replay him and boost him by two. Which means that the Thrive triggers again. But with our current setup, I should be able to bounty it quite easily. Because I'm guessing they're gonna play something that uh, Thrives again. Which means that Sir Scratch Lot is going to be because of the fact that we bled the. Okay. okay. Huh. It's not too much of a problem. Uh, the only problem is that they can 
Hmm. I could just smack it now. Which I think I'm gonna do. Sometimes it's just it's just the best option to use your leader ability immediately. And I'm even gonna just power play this. So which finder and our leader ability. Because that can purify the um the executioner. Boom. There goes her scratchable. Because he also triggers thrive on your opponent's units. And now we've uh bounty to Fuka and we're one point ahead. Which is something that I want to keep that way. Problem is I don't want to use the purifier right now. I need to purify the executioner so I can continue deal, continue dealing damage. Uh, if I don't, I just don't have a way out of this round. Especially now that I've committed to you. Ooh, boy. Okay. It's actually not that bad. The unicorns. The unicorns. Um, I'm gonna um, purify the executioner now. And we can spend eight coins to kill the Uka. There we go. Because if I actually press this too quickly, some other shit happens. Um, let's bleed both of these bad boys. Yeah. I don't know why I bled the same card twice. That was stupid. Whatever. They're gonna they're not gonna forfeit anyway, because they haven't used their uh stratagem yet. I could add six damage on the Kiro next with hysteria. So that's fine. Purify. But that added a veil, right? Does does that not add veil? Veil, right? Yeah, also give it veil. Crap, so that's annoying, but at least one of the veils is gone. Um, the bounty is gone as well, sadly. I could do purge, but even that is going to add stuff. So I'm just going to use Hysteria on the card that was just added. There we go. We can do this. And we can do this. There we go. Six more coins. Not too far ahead, but if I want to finish this round, I need to add a single point of bleeding. It's annoying that the veil doesn't show up. So we need to remember that the Chiron X actually has... It's not a monster unit. I could have just killed that. Okay, so now they killed the executioner, but... Chiron X is 4 base power, so that's not a problem. I can use Graydon now. And get a full coin pouch. It's funny, it's not veiled. I don't know why they boosted it. They must have forgotten them to themselves. It's not veiled because it's not a monster unit. It's a default, like a, a neutral unit. So it's, it, it is a monster, of course, but it's not part of the monster faction. So, Graydon. I don't need to pay the tribute. I could have done that just to get rid of some coins, but I just make the difference even bigger. Because my coin pouch is full, so we're definitely wasting units here. Okay, Keltolis is annoying. I could Eternal Fire Disciple this uh, to, just to start spending some coins. I know I'm going to lose the Fire Sworn Zealot next time. But I just want to spend some coins to get the candle on the board. Because I think I can deal with this. Would be nice to kill the um, the unicorn as well, but Caltulus is now the biggest thing on the board. I can't give it a shield because it's failed. Um, so now I can tap this again. Play Conjurer's Candle. I'm gonna lose two coins. I know, but it's fine. And then just boost. Um, these fellas. Like that. Oh, we should still quite be quite ahead. Um, I could keep one coin. Why do I need the coins? I don't need the coins. Let's grab this round. Grab this round, push the next one, and then finish with Brute and uh, Ignatius. 
How big is Ignatius at the moment? Probably not full. Oh, almost full. Thought it was worse. It was going to be full after we killed the, uh, the unicorn. The unicorn. And that's going to get put blood money up to four damage again. We get a renew. Does that do anything? Aside from six damage. Oh, it's going to kill the witch finder. It's fine, I guess. Why? Um, I'm actually not going to tap this now. Because I'm going to lose the one that I, I create anyway. So I'm just going to purge. And that's going to add a bounty to something that can be added. But I do get five coins now. Meaning I can boost the witch finder again. Boom. Show me your last card. Okay, I'll I'll take that. That was a mistake, because even with the leader ability, it's only three points, so we get Oh no, it's not three points. They we lose, yeah, because we killed the uh, the unicorn there. Do I take this? They did spend all of their so they don't have any veils left. I'm gonna keep Professor. Um Yeah, they don't have any veils left. I'm gonna keep it like this. It's fine. Should be fine. They lost Kaltullus. Even if they use Witch's Sabbath, that's going to get the Witchfinder back. Um, the only thing that we lose now is the fact that we don't have Conjure Scandal, but it was really high to start with. Um, oh boy, that's a very bad hand if they were to push. Okay, they don't. Um, then it is Field Experiments. There we go. That's actually going to be a pretty high card to get back from the graveyard if they do play Witch's Sabbath. So it's going to be Kurt, the failed experiment of Witchfinder. Which might have been a miscalculation from my end, but I think it's going to be fine. Ooh, that's really good. So we're guaranteed the Brute and Ignatius now. Um, I'm going to see if we can make this even better. Royal Decree. I don't even need the scapegoat then. Uh, we do start, however, so either we play Octavia Hill first or the Scapegoat, but I think I'm gonna, yeah, Octavia Hill first. I don't even know what to play now. Because the Scoundrel would be another option. So if I get rid of Witch Hunter Executioner and... Yeah, I'm gonna do that. And the Hysteria. I can get... Both the Brute and Ignatius Hill, which is which are cards that I need, I really want. And then I can get rid of the Executioner and Hysteria. A very gold hand. Any engine cards coming up will be destroyed by Professor. Oh. Okay. The biggest problem now is that I don't I only have one spender. Um The Brute isn't gonna be growing too much further from this it's gonna be 12 points still i'm gonna royal decree into the scoundrel and just try and guess that that's where this is going okay uh so scoundrel without any coins and that gives us the palace so that kind of confirms that they don't have any purifies left and they're we're now at equal units so if they play Keltullus now um, we're actually going to be in the advantage. Um, although they can't just resurrect it. We saw the resurrect already. So it's either going to be which is Sabbath. At which point we're going to be at equal. Or they now kill the Scandrel. But killing high powered units if you're planning on using which is Sabbath is going to be very bad for you. Banish. A banish. Okay. No, I don't even need to. I, I only get an extra coin from this. So I'm going to use the Brute now. So Banish did put it into my graveyard, so it will also not be coming back if they were to use Witch's Sabbath and Dragal Larva. That is good, I can kill that. So if I do Horse and Freak Show, I can do tap, 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 tap. Empty board. So that's why Horse and Freak Show was nerfed. So now Parasite is going to kill that. Should be fine. We don't have any spenders anymore. But it is what it is. We can put Ignatius Hale on the board. 
and then we're not going to have any use for elite ability. It's going to be at 6. If it's large enough, we can kill it, but right now it's 30 to 0. On two units, mind you, so that might be annoying. Um, we get Andrega Larva again, which is good. I can kill two things with that. I can kill two things with that. That's really funny. That and then the other one. So it's still an empty board. It's 36 to 0. Yes, that was going to end. Not well. All right. Very nice. I think that showed off really nicely how powerful the Toxic Bounty deck is. Um, I do admit that the poisons are very situational. If you have any other uh, ideas for those two cards, please let me know. Uh, I do like the option to have a few more tall removal options. Um, but if you're facing Veil, as we did right now, there's really no use. Um, but in other situations, they have been very, very useful to just have a backup tall removal option aside from uh, Graydon. Because uh, some cards can get really big and if you had a bounty on that card, you really want to kill it and then poison is just the easiest way to go. Other than that, th all the cards in this deck were already very powerful but with the slight changes that they got and a couple of the, the boosts to uh, the leader ability as well. Uh, bounty is just a very, very powerful archetype. If your opponent runs engines, you win. If your opponent only has a limited amount of control options, you usually win. Uh, it's only against like very tall cards that you might uh, lose sometimes, which is where the poison comes in. Um, so there we go. And that is the end of the video already. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gwentech on the Toxic Bounty deck as usual. Don't forget to upvote the video. Don't forget to, well, not upvote the video, like the video, but upvote the deck on the Play Gwent website if you've uh, really liked it. If you have any feedback, do let me know in the comment section down below. That's what we're here for after all, trying to help each other out. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And I hope to see you in the next episode of Grand Edge. Goodbye and stay nutty.